Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to the final video for the Presto Pressure Canner 101 series. Okay, I hope that you've enjoyed it up to this point. A common question that we get is, it kind of goes through walking through the whole process. Okay, so we're going to do that today. We're going to walk through the whole process of how this works uh, for me. It will deviate from household to household, and I'll, po I'll point out those times when it does. Um, I am not going to actually be canning anything because I don't have anything ready to can, but I do have two and a half inches of water in the bottom of the canner, and I do have the rack in the bottom of the canner, and it is warm water, warm to hot because our faucet comes out really hot. And so now we're going to work at bringing it up to temp, okay, because this seems to be where a lot of questions are. Did you know that your canner top only goes on one way? Yes, it does. And so we get that done up and then we turn it until it locks into place. When those handles lock, you're good to go. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat. I have the heat turned up to between medium and high, okay? <clears throat> a lot of people will say, don't turn it on high. Um, I, I, I don't know that it makes a difference, truthfully. But I normally put it on somewhere between medium to high, leaning a little bit more towards the high. I don't have numbers on my dial. This is one of those points where it's going to be dependent on your stovetop, okay? When I am working with the, or when I was working with the electric stove, um, I would normally put it on high because it would bring the water up to temp faster. So the water in here is very hot, and now we are going to wait until a steady stream of steam comes out of here. What that's doing is it's vacating all of the excess air in the canner. Very important process when you're canning because if you don't get it all out, then what happens is it interferes with the time and the temperature and the pressure for the jars that are in there, for the food that is in there, okay? So it's very important to be sure to vent a steady steam, st <laughs> steady stream of steam out of here before you get going. Now, a question often comes up about the lock, right? Um, there are, and I've, I've been guilty of it, um, a lot of my canners, this will pop up before that 10 minutes is up. And it, it sometimes it'll pop up before that steam becomes steady. So while it is not a bad thing, okay, it is not part of the calculation. So you're going to let this vent a steady steam of stream, and then we will put on the regulator. The first round, I'm going to put on the regulator. The second round, I'm going to show you what I do with the jiggler. So hang tight if you want to see both, okay? Let's let this heat up, and I'll be back. Okay, so this has been going probably eight, nine minutes now. And as you can see, I hope there's a steady stream of steam. So now we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes. And this popped up. But that's not a deal breaker if the lock doesn't pop up. Some canners, it just doesn't. It really is an individual kind of thing. Canners, like a whole bunch of other equipment, have their own personalities, okay? So if it doesn't pop up, that's fine. It will. It will. How's that? It will. When I designed the kitchen, I did not think about backlighting. So <laughs> I think that you can see the steady stream of steam. Timer just went off for 10 minutes. The lock is up. Okay. And so now I'm going to put on the regulator. Now, what if your lock isn't up? It's not a big deal. It will go up very shortly after you put the regulator on. Okay. So remember that's hot steam. Whoop. Okay, and now we're going to put that on there. Now, I'm going to back down on my heat. I want to get this up to 11 pounds of pressure, so I'm going to take this down to about medium, and we're going to watch it climb, okay? Let me see if I can get you closer here. There we go. Get away from the light. Okay, so we're going to watch that needle climb. until it hits 11 pounds of pressure. 
depending on your stove, depending on whether it's electric, depending on whether it's gas, depending on whether it's propane, okay? And because I have a propane cooktop, that cooks under 12,000 BTUs. There's a difference between the indoor ones and the outdoor ones, okay? So depending on what cooktop you're using, depending on the personality of your canner, there's a lot of what ifs going on here. Um, you can either back down the heat once you get closer to that 10 pounds of pressure or you can do it earlier. Now in all transparency here, I'm still fairly new to canning on the gas, right? So before I knew exactly where to put that dial, I knew exactly you know when to back it down to be able to regulate the temperature and now I'm still kind of learning that a little bit and honestly I almost never use the regulator anymore. I'm doing this today for uh, video purposes. So you, you'll learn all of that the more that you do it. If you're brand new to canning and you just wanna, you wanna test it out and become a little less afraid of it, right? Then this is a great way to do it. Definitely this is a great way to do it. Don't waste the lids. Don't worry about all that. Put the water in the canner, bring it up to pressure, learn how to regulate that pressure so that it does not go over. You really don't want your pressure to go way over and then have to back it down and then have to turn it back up to get it back up to where you need it. And then, you know, you, you want to try to hit this very easily. So you see we're at 10 pounds of pressure here, right? And so now I'm going to back down the flame a little bit more. <clears throat> and now we're really close to 11 pounds of pressure. You don't want this will not jiggle. The regulator will not jiggle, okay? If you are supposed to hit 15 pounds of pressure, you're probably going to get a little jiggle in there because that's just the way it works. It's a 15 pound weight so that it won't move unless you were hit that 15 or go over. So if you're at the elevation where you have to can with that, um, then that's going to be a little bit different. But if you're like me, I have to do 11 pounds of pressure. So we've hit 11 pounds. And I don't want it to climb anymore, so I'm going to adjust my heat a little bit more now. And we're going to try to hold that 11. See, we're heading towards 11 and a half. So we're going to try to hold that 11 pounds of pressure. Now, this is when you start your timer. When you hit that pressure where you're supposed to, that's when you start your timer. So bam, if I'm doing beans or meat, right now is when I want to start my timer for 75 minutes, figuring it's pints, okay? Okay, so now we're backing her down a little bit more because she's hitting 12. And I don't know if you can hear it, but with the gas, it's just it's just different for me. It's just different. I'm not used to it. So I think I'm going to be able to hold this, yeah, just under 12 pounds of pressure. And you do that, you know, learn, learn where it sits, learn where the dial sits on your stove, Learn where, you know, the gauge hits, depending on the different temps. You have to find that sweet spot. It's going to be completely different for every single one of us. So now that I'm up to the pressure that I need, technically a little bit over, um, and I legitimately cannot turn down this canner anymore without blowing out the flame. If I were to walk past this really quick, it would turn itself off. It would blow out the flame. Anyway. So now we're gonna hold it here for a few minutes, let it do what it does, and then we're gonna let it turn, we're gonna turn it off and show you how it depressurizes. I don't know if you can hear that with the flame, with the gas. But it's holding steady, the needle's not moving. That's what we want. That is the ideal circumstance right there. So if you're supposed to can at 11 pounds of pressure and it gets up to 12 or 13 or 14, what does that do to your food? Technically, not a lot, okay? But it can cause siphoning if you're doing it for a really long time. Um, you can, you know, be careful with what you do because if you're canning meats, then you could run into a thing where you might can, you know, you might run your canner dry. You don't want to do that. Um, it's meant to be the guide for what you should do. If you go underneath that 11 pounds of pressure, you have to start that time completely over again. Completely over again. So then when you bring it back up to the 11 pounds of pressure, then 
you start the timer for 75 minutes or whatever it is. Again, that's not what you want to do. Okay, so now we're just going to turn this off. Okay, and we're going to let it depressurize naturally. I'm looking at my clock. It says it's 437. We're going to see how long it takes to depressurize naturally. I'm not going to make you sit here and wait for that. When it's time, when it's time to turn it off and be done, okay, then you don't touch the, re you leave the regulator alone. Leave it alone. Don't help it depressurize because part of the calculation is letting it come down to zero again on its own. That's very, very important. How will you know when it's time when it's time, how will you know when it's completely depressurized? Because sometimes that dial will hit zero and it's still not depressurized. How do you know that? Because the lock is not down. So when it completely depressurizes, the gauge is at zero and the lock is down. It collapses down. Okay, it is, oh, <laughs> that's not what I intended. It is 452 and the lock just went down. I was gonna show you that it, it hit zero but that the lock had not gone down yet, and so it still was not time, okay? Now, if I had jars in here, I would want to wait another five minutes after that lock goes down, just as a safety precaution, so that it does not have um, the temperature change significantly when you pull the jars out. But I do pull this off, okay? So when that lock goes down, I pull that off, I pull, I pull off the regulator and then I let it sit for another five minutes and this will allow it to kind of regulate itself a little bit more. Um, if you pull them out too quickly, it can cause siphoning and it, you know, that's no fun. That's no fun when you're pulling them out of the canner. So we're going to let this complete, completely cool off and then we're going to start again with the jiggler. Now we are going to do the same process only using the jiggler okay so that you can see how I do that so the water is in the canner <clears throat> and I am going to turn on the heat there we go whoop turned on the wrong one okay and I've set it between medium and high and we're going to get a steady stream of steam coming out of that and then we will deal with the jiggler jiggle jiggle Okay, so the camera is not picking it up really, there, a little bit maybe, but there's a steady stream of steam, and so now I'm going to uh, let that vent for 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer. It took about the same amount of time, like eight, eight, nine minutes for it to come back up to temp to where it was doing this, the steam. So um, now we're going to let it vent for 10 minutes with a steady stream of steam. Where is that? It's there. There it is. You see it? Yep. Okay. So sometimes it's hard to see you guys. I'm standing right in front of it and can't see it unless I go a certain way. So it depends on your light, but I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay. So the camera is not picking it up really. There, a little bit maybe, but there's a steady stream of steam. And so now I'm going to uh, let that vent for 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer. It took about the same amount of time, like eight eight, nine minutes for it to come back up to temp to where it was doing this, the steam. So um, now we're going to let it vent for 10 minutes with a steady stream of steam. Where is that? It's there. There it is. You see it? Yep. Okay. So sometimes it's hard to see you guys. I'm standing right in front of it and can't see it unless I go a certain way. So it depends on your light, but I'll be back when 10 minutes is up. As you can see, the lock popped up. So this canner likes to do that. And now we're going to put the jiggler on, okay? When you use a jiggler, you do not pay attention to the gauge. I know you're going to look at it. I look at it. I watch it. But the whole point of the jiggler is that you're not counting on the gauge to give you the correct information. So don't base any decision on the gauge beyond this, okay? Now, when you're using a gauge, um, your pressure can be slightly different. For my elevation, where I use 11 pounds of pressure for the regulator, I only use 10 pounds of pressure when I use the weight. 
and so I take one of the rings off, okay? I have not adjusted the heat yet. We're, we're going to get there. <clears throat> this is why the jiggler has become a, a really preferred method is because you don't have to rely on the gauge. Now, if you're uh, lucky enough to have an extension office that actually offers gauge testing, then you don't have to worry about that, okay? But we don't have an extension office that does that. Sorry, the dog. Okay. We don't have an extension office that does that. So having getting it tested is really not an option for us. I could pack the whole thing up, ship it off to Presto, hope for the best, or I could just buy a new one. I don't want to do any of that, okay? I just want to use what I've got. See, it's starting to jiggle. So now I'm going to adjust my temperature, okay? And because you only want it doing that nice little hula dance. There we go, okay? Now, if it's rocking like crazy, then that's not good. That's not what you want. You just want it to do that nice little hula dance. And you will do that now Now that it's doing the hula dance. I think I turned it down too low. So I'm gonna turn it back up a little bit. And when it starts jiggling again, that's what I did. I accidentally turned down my, my heat too much. Okay, now we are going to start our timer because now it's being up, now it's counting as being at the pressure that you need for when you start your timer, okay? So when you get that jiggler, when you get that little hula dance going, that's where you want to be. Adjust your flame or your temperature as needed so that you only have that soft hula dance going on. You do not want it rocking out. You really don't. So then we will set our timer for, say, 75 minutes for pints, okay? And we will keep an eye on it. The nice part about the jiggler is that you can hear it. So where if you're using just the gauge and the regulator, you have to keep visually double checking to make sure that you're not going over pressure. Where with the jiggler, you can be within earshot and have an idea of what's going on. I know the noise that it makes doing its hula dance, okay? So I know that if it starts going higher and faster, that it's too hot and I need to come adjust my temperature. I know if I don't hear it, that it is too low and I need to start over again. So having the jiggler is a nice little, it kind of takes a little pressure off you, pun intended. Okay, so now that we've got that jiggle going, she's doing her thing, we have found the sweet spot where the jiggler is concerned, then life is good. Now, a Sharpie marker makes life that much better. Once you have successfully figured out where on your dial that you are as far as you know your heat source you can always mark it just just mark the top of your stove if you want with a little mark with a sharpie marker and that way you know that that's where you need to be if you're not going to remember it okay so now we're going to turn off the heat the heat is off we're going to let this depressurize naturally it is whoops 521 521 i'll let you know when it stops okay so it is, what time is it? 5.34. So that's how long it took to cool off, okay? And to depressurize so that the lock goes down. So now I will take the jiggler off. And if I had jars in here, I would let it sit for another five minutes. Same, same deal. And then I would take the lid off. Remember when you're taking the lid off that you always want to open it away from you, okay? Because all of that steam and all that fun stuff is in there and you don't want to be hit with that in the face or the arms or anything else. Okay, so that is the beginning to end with the Presto pressure canner, both with a regular regulator and with the jiggler. I hope that this was helpful. Sometimes seeing it really makes a difference. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I would love to answer them for you. Until next time, remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until the next time, everybody, please be safe.